forget things, or forget something, something important maybe. Did you know that your parents' job can help you remember? They're not asking. <laughs> when I was growing up, this is some of the things my parents said to me. So see if this is something that your parents might say to you. When I was getting ready for bed, they would say something like, Tom, did you brush your teeth? Did you go to the bathroom? And they would always say, do you remember to wash your hands? When I was in bed, did you say your prayers? My brother and I shared a bedroom together, and they would say something like, don't get out of bed. No horsing around. Go right to sleep. And then, don't make me come back up here. <laughs> Ever hear anything like that? Sound familiar? I heard Bill Cosby say one time to his kids, remember, I brought you into this world, and I can take you out. <laughs> God also wants us to remember some things, things we should do. Pray, reach out to others, read your Bible every day, help someone that we might find in need. And that's why it says in Ephesians 6, 4, that parents are to bring up their child in the training and the instruction of the Lord. <coughs> to remind us that God is always with us. I have a friend who gave me some of these. He calls them Little Jesus. And he asked that you put it in your pocket or carry it with you all the time. And remember that God is with you. And when you touch it or see it or think about it, you pray as God is leading you to pray. So I have one for each of you. Actually, I have a couple of extras or something else to buy one as a reminder.
Heavenly Father, we come today being reminded of your love and your forgiveness and your grace. Also being reminded of the kind of world that we live in as the results of the events that happened yesterday in our backyard. We pray that you would continue to be with all of those who were injured and again be with our country. We know that more things change, the more they stay the same. But the same kind of thing has happened in the past. And unfortunately, this is the kind of world that we live in today. That's why we say that our world needs the church. It needs it as much today as it did in the past. More specifically, people need the Lord in their life. We need to continue to be the ones that follow your example. Your example of love and forgiveness. We need to also be that person of prayer that you would like us to be. That our relationship with the Father could be just like yours. And how thankful we are that we can take our burdens to the Lord. Knowing that our burdens change every day depending on what we have to face. But we also know that we don't have the same burdens today that we had yesterday in many ways. But we're still concerned about those who have recently lost their loved one. We're concerned about those who are in the hospital or the nursing home. We continue to be concerned about prodigal sons and daughters who are living a life that keeps them far away from being home with you. We're concerned about the condition of your church. Your word says that it's the same today as it was yesterday. And yet we know in many ways it's either being ignored or having folks trying to change the meaning to something you never intended it to mean. And it's so easy to focus on all that's wrong instead of what's right. Help us today. For your word is the word that we continue to preach. And because of that, lives will be changed and heaven will get a little bigger. Some shattered relationships will be healed, physical and spiritual wholeness will be received. Some prodigals will be coming home. And people will find food and clothing and a safe place to lay their head tonight because of your church and your people. And your people will continue to be faithful to your word as you gave it. Father, we count our blessings every day. And we'll continue to be able to do that, again, because of your love. Help us, especially, to keep our focus as we listen to the news. For in spite of what happens every day, we know that the hymn writer was correct when the hymn writer wrote, This is my Father's world, who let me never forget, that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King. Let the heavens ring. God reigns so that the earth be glad. May we live with that truth every day. And may we continue to use the model of prayer that Jesus gave the disciples when they asked him how to pray. And he said, when you pray, use this as a model and pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today, as you see, is from the sixth chapter of Matthew, and I would like you to read the lesson with me, please, if you will. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? 
See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sometimes learn the hard way that we have time in any given day to do what we want to do and we are in the same boat as everyone else we only have 24 hours a day to get it done how prosperous we are depends on how we use the time that we have the good news is that throughout the Bible, we find that God is not against someone being prosperous and using time properly. In the 8th chapter of Duty of Deuteronomy, it reminds us, be remember the Lord your God. For He is the one who gives you the ability to produce well, and so confirms His covenant which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. God is not against wealth. He's against the one who does not use the wealth properly. Luke 12 tells us what happens when someone's health has them. They hoard. They hoard the possessions for themselves. And they fail to see the riches that God has given them. The rich man in Scripture had fertile ground, so much so that it yielded so plentiful a crop that he was in a dilemma. What am I going to do? All my storehouses are full. I still have lots of crops to, to bring in. I know. I'll just build bigger storehouses. And so kind of, I think, thinking to himself and smiling, he said, I have not laid up for many years. I can live the way that I really want to. And his security was in what he had laid up. Again, those things that he was hoarding. So God said to him, you fool, because this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. And this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. Trusting in one's possessions or one's riches will only go as far as those riches go and only go as long as they last. But God's riches is prosperity. And that prosperity reaches or can reach into every area of our life. And the earlier we learn that, the better. God has power to meet our needs. And when we look at our lives, we see how he's doing that. And that's a powerful blessing. The blessing that is talked about in Deuteronomy 29, where it reads, carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. God promises that his laws of prosperity will work in anyone's life who is obedient to his word. And that's the catch. We prosper by, leaving, by believing in God's word fully and not just in part of it. Our motives 
give us direction in our life. And sometimes those give us the wrong direction. So we learn God's prosperity will only work in the life of a believer who is committed to his word. Committed because they love God. And not because they just want to see what they can get out of it. That's why we always have to be checking our motives. Our first priority should be that we want to please God. Remembering that where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. And if your treasure is Jesus and his word, then you are a great candidate for God's blessing. In 3 John 2, it tells us, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, <clears throat> even as your soul gets along well. So to be prosperous, we first of all need to have a prosperous soul. And we can begin by having a prosperous soul when we begin to fill the scripture, fulfill the scripture, especially those like Matthew 6, where it sees, says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That's a great promise, isn't it? And it's a promise that needs to be the foundation of our life. We need to realize God's prosperity isn't necessarily what we have financially because his blessings also include things like his protection, his healing power, his wisdom, his success, being the person who realizes every good thing that we have has come from him. And it's why Jesus paid the price for us, taking our place, bearing the curse of sin so that we can live <clears throat> and live freely. Isaiah 53 says he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds were healed. And peace in that verse means nothing missing, nothing broken, but rather wholeness in every area of our life, spirit, soul, and body. And to remember that kind of prosperous life doesn't just happen overnight. <clears throat> we build on the foundation. We live within then God's circle of blessing. The blessing that comes to us as we incorporate these four things into our life. We first begin by walking in the truth of the word. And that's pretty obvious. That we can't know what truth is unless we're daily spending some time in his word. We need to ask ourselves. Am I then being faithful in doing what he's leading and asking me to do? as I read his word. And then am I willing to let the words of Proverbs 3.9 be part of my life? Where it says we honor the Lord with our wealth and with the first fruits of all our crops. Am I faithfully giving back to God out of what he has given to me? And then finally, am I living by faith in my heart? <clears throat> With my mouth, am I continuing to proclaim the truth of his word? That's a tough one for a lot of people. I've heard of people who said, when I invited Jesus into my life, I lost about half of my vocabulary. And it's true. But we receive the fullness of God's blessing that we need by spending time in his word by being found faithful in doing what it's asking us to do, by allowing God to use all that we have and be a faithful witness. So, if that were the test today, how would you do? I ask myself the, the same that I ask you. How am I doing? 
may we never forget that we can live a life of prosperity because it is God's will for each of us. He desires his children to have the best life here on earth, just as you and I desire the best life for our children. His plan is to have all our needs met according to his riches. So let's remember where our treasure is. And remember that where that treasure is, our heart will be also. And as we read, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And we know that to be true, don't we? But he always keeps his word. And we always can be thankful for that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know how true it is that each day has enough trouble of its own. We saw that especially yesterday in our world. But we also know it's true that you will never leave us nor forsake us no matter what we're facing. You are always there for us. So help us every day to live into the truth of your word. For we pray in your master's name.